Going to school usually means lines of cars and yellow buses. Today, it's a trip down a tree-lined gravel road. For this group of 4-H students, some of them future farmers and foresters, coming to this tree farm is a chance to see, touch, and learn on land they might someday own and need to care for. Look right over that little hump there. This is, was, was a gully there once upon a time, which tells me more than likely that a whole series of gullies didn't form in the forest. They probably formed when this land was cleared at some point and erosion happens. Planting trees stopped the erosion, but its effect on the land can still be felt. And it, it washed the topsoil off. And look at the size of those trees and the height of them compared to that side over there. Those trees are a good 10 or 15 feet taller. Three. Raising timber takes hard work and know-how, like learning how many trees are growing in an area. So you only count the trees when, the, when this prism breaks them apart and the two sections are touching. Or learning to look at the top of the tree and not the trunk when it's time to thin. Look at the crown, the leaves. It doesn't have much crown, so that tree's not going to respond very well to thinning. The whole purpose of leaves, it's a big factory to make food. But if you release this one with that little small crown, it's just going to sit there stunted for years. While the trees in this forest are grown as a crop, we told you this was a wildlife day, didn't we? <laughs> they're also home for animals. Every part of the forest, including dead trees, can be habitat for wildlife. The salamanders, some of these other non-game species need fallen logs. If you're in East Tennessee, logs like this are drumming sites for rough grouse. In our area, they're really good for uh, potentially nesting sites for turkeys like to get up against the base of a log, base of a tree. Growing food plots can be great for hunting. And this is a mix of wheat and oats, a little bit of cereal rye. And can you see the browsing that's already occurring? You see this right here? This is use. They're starting to hit this. But they also support a wide variety of wild animals. Food, shelter, water. And if you can fit one of those in, maybe your backyard has or your land has one, maybe not all three, maybe you've got a couple, maybe you can enhance. And if you can improve on any of those, you're gonna have wildlife. It's advice that applies to all Tennesseans, whether you live on a farm, in the suburbs, or even the city. What can you do on your property to make your property a little bit more healthy, a little bit more wildlife friendly? One acre is equal to 43,500 square feet. Soil and seed are two more components of land management. 43,560. How much you spread is going to require a little math. I was a little bit worried about that because I ain't too good at like algebra and stuff. I was a little worried about it, but I figured it out. 11,475. Now I divided that by 43,000. Now you're working. 560. No matter what you do in life, you're going to have some sort of math or science in it. Whether it is figuring out square footage for your uh, pasture or figuring out square footage to build a house, you're going to need to use it. These days, growing up in a rural area doesn't necessarily mean you know more about the outdoors than a city kid. A lot of people may think that the tomatoes are grown in the back of Walmart, but they ain't. Uh, most kids don't really know where breakfast comes from, don't really know where the resources cross the spectrum for wildlife and for plants and animals and things that we grow. So this is a real good introduction that you know everything starts from the soil and from private lands and moves on up the food chain. Basically what we're going to do, I got some kick nets and some dip nets, beat around in the bushes there and see what we get. These little mad times are in the catfish family, which people will find them and, oh, it's a baby catfish. That little guy's full grown. Is it? Oh, it feels great out here. It's just a lot better than sitting in class to me. I enjoy being outdoors and everything. While this certainly isn't a traditional classroom, being able to see and touch and do things themselves really helps the kids learn. When we went in the creek with them, hopefully they learned some to how to identify some fish and what some of these critters are that are living in the water and the fact that there are a lot of different kind of animals living in a, in a stream like we've got here. It's all part of the day's theme. The more you know about Tennessee's land and its waters, the more likely you'll want to take care of them. Lately, everybody's real into riding four-wheelers in the streams and stuff like that. And while it may not look like you're hurting anything, uh, you're actually destroying habitat. I've always been like a person that liked to be around water. I grew up around water, so it was my favorite part. I'm a pretty big four-wheeler rider, and I didn't realize that it was harmful to the streams and 
all that. So that gave me a new perspective. It's an outdoor lesson that's really a life lesson on how our decisions affect the world around us. And if we tear it up now, future generations are not gonna have it to enjoy like we did. So if we teach them about it, teach them to take care of it, my kids, their kids, and even on down to grandkids, on down the line can, can have it to enjoy the same type of stuff I did as a kid. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.